Hello and thanks for joining us today. My name is Chiara and I'm the Director of Patient Services at Anthony Nolan. I'm also a physiotherapist, which is why today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the importance of physical activity and the impact of fatigue after having had a transplant. So what is physical activity and what is exercise? I think sometimes people get put off at the thought of having to do or being told to do physical activity and exercise. They think of marathons and triathlons, but actually it's none of those things. You need to just keep it really simple. Physical activity is moving our bodies in a normal way. Just doing something that gets our heart beating and gets us a little bit short of breath is all we need to do. We need to start small, especially when you've been through a transplant journey. You don't need any equipment. Uh, you don't need sweatbands, weights, anything like that. You just need this body that we have um, and to get the best from it. There are some government guidelines. We know that the government suggests that we do about 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week, uh, or at least 75 minutes of vigorous exercise per week, which sounds quite intimidating, but actually when you break it down day to day, it's not too bad at all. And what I'm going to do in this short period of time with you is just tell you about how to just take things slowly and how you can build that up. So why is physical activity important after having had a transplant? So the effects of not exercising will give you a bit of an idea about why it's important. So exercising or not exercising will make our joints become really stiff. It will make our muscles weaker. It could potentially lower our blood pressure. You might feel like you're quite lightheaded when you get up. And that's just because we're getting weaker uh, in, our, in our bodies and being able to hold ourselves upright. And then when you jump up, you get that lightheadedness. Um, it can put us at a higher risk of getting chest infections if we're not up and about and taking nice deep breaths when we're, when we're walking. It also puts us at a higher risk of getting injuries um, or becoming more injury prone when we're not quite as strong. And then the really important things are around the link with sleep and the link with fatigue that we're going to talk about in a little while. So um, doing physical activity helps us get into a really nice um, rhythm, a day to day rhythm, which also then feeds into our really healthy sleep pattern. And when we do that, when we do physical activity, that really helps us also to manage any fatigue that we might be feeling, whether that's um, fatigue because of cancer treatments or cancer related treatments or whether it's fatigue related to your transplant. So just for a minute, I'm going to talk about this cycle of inactivity. And it's something that we all go through at various times of our life. But there's a real, a really strong, really clear reason why you might be feeling like this. You might, want to, you might not want to do physical exercise or physical activity because it makes you breathless or because you don't feel like your body can do it. So you don't do it. You then become fearful of doing that activity or that exercise. So you stop doing it. Then you avoid those physical activities, which, which make you even more breathless. So you do less activity. You do less activity. So your muscles become weaker. So you're less able to do physical activity and exercise when you want to do that. And then you go round in this vicious circle of being fearful of doing something because you think your body can't do it or because it makes you breathless. You do them less. You then become less able to do them. And that's sort of called a, an inactivity cycle. So what kind of exercise can you do and is it safe? This is a really great question when you've had any sort of blood cancer or blood disorder and when you've had a transplant. You should not exercise if you have a temperature, if you're nauseous or you've got unexplained diarrhea or vomiting. You, if you've had a persistent headache, any unexplained aches and pains. I know that lots of you will be dealing with various aches and pains, but if there's anything that's out of the ordinary, um, then take that as a reason to perhaps not do exercise on that day. Or if you have any dizziness whatsoever or you're feeling faint, then don't exercise on that day as well. It's really important if you're able to get your blood results, um, if you're feeling sort of more tired than usual, to perhaps get your uh, bloods checked and make sure that you've got everything as it should be and that your transplant team are happy for you to continue to exercise. So how hard should you push yourself? Well, there's a really easy way to do that. You can just think about a scale of naught to 10. Naught is completely relaxed, watching TV, not short of breath at all. 10 is the very other end of the spectrum that you're completely short of breath. You've done the hardest thing you could ever possibly do and you're absolutely exhausted. The really nice place for you to work is sort of in around four to six. That's a really cool place for you to be working so that you're a little bit short of breath, your heart is pumping a little bit more than usual, 
But the important thing to remember is that you're still able to hold a conversation with somebody that's perhaps walking or jogging beside you. So in your mind, just think about that scale of naught to 10 and try and pitch your shortness of breath or your, the heart rate that you're feeling inside your chest um, sort of around the four to six mark. That's a really healthy place to start. So that's some ways to, in terms of the, the physical activity, and I'm gonna jump now to talking about some tr uh, transplant-related fatigue. So what is fatigue? I think unless you have fatigue, and I've, I've never experienced it, but I'm going on what uh, lots of patients have talked to us about and our, our really wonderful uh, guide to managing fatigue that we produce at Anthony Nolan. Fatigue isn't just tiredness. You know, if you have a late night and an early start and you feel a bit sleepy the next day, you're, you're tired and that can be resolved by having an early night and a really good night's sleep. Fatigue doesn't allow you to do that. You, you'll still feel just as terrible the next day. Even getting dressed, getting up in the morning might seem like an impossible task. That's fatigue. It's mentally and physically draining. You might have no motivation and it's just a, a really difficult concept for people to understand and it could come upon you very quickly and unexpectedly. So what are the causes of fatigue? We're not 100% sure, but what we do know is it's often a combination of things when people have had a transplant. It could be just because of the conditioning regime that you've had before you have your transplant, so the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy that we've talked about. Um, it could be that you have low blood counts, you might be anemic, uh, the total body irradiation. There could be other comorbidities that you're dealing with. You might be diabetic, you might have a heart problem or a respiratory problem. And just the combination of that uh, are things that will often lead to people having a, a worse fatigue after their transplant. Also, sadly, we know that fatigue um, affects those that are older. So it could be that it's age related as well with your fatigue. And then the last one, which I think is actually the most important one, fatigue is often linked to just the psychological impact of having had a transplant. Everything that you've already been through, the effect that the mood can have on your fatigue should not be underestimated. So we're going to talk a little bit now about how we can manage that fatigue. People often ask us how long it will last, when it comes, when it comes on, when to expect it, but there's no real rhyme or reason. Uh, fatigue could burn itself out within a year of having your transplant, uh, or sadly we know that some people are, uh, are dealing and living with fatigue for much, much longer, for years after having had their transplant. We also know that some people don't get it at all. So there's no real rhyme or reason and we're still trying to work out the best way to, um, to sort of see it coming and to, to try and input some of these really great ideas to manage it so that it doesn't impact on your activities of daily living or on the things that you like to do. So is there anything that you can do to help? Absolutely. There are three key components to managing your fatigue and that's energy and how to conserve and utilize your energy, your sleep, and physical activity. And the three of those are sort of in, in, intertwined with each other and they help you manage your fatigue. So I'm gonna talk about energy first. And the most important thing here is about something called pacing. Fatigue loves it when we do loads on a good day and then nothing on a bad day. And we have this energy, kind of an up and down pattern of energy. That's the thing that we really want to avoid. So the way to do that is even if you're having a terrible day, is to just try and do a little bit. Get up, get dressed, have your breakfast, you know, go perhaps go to the local shops if you're able to do it. But even if you're not able to do that, do something. If you wake up one day and you feel a million dollars, that doesn't mean that you try and do all of the jobs on your things to do list. You go to the supermarket, you pop down to the shops, you look after your grandchildren, because then the next day you'll be exhausted. And we want that's exactly what we want to avoid, that up and down pattern of energy and pacing. So pacing is all about keeping it everything on an even keel. The other thing is to try and set yourself small goals. And the one that I always used to speak to my patients about is, is exactly that. If you're able to get to the end of your driveway one day, then fantastic, and let that be your goal. The other really important thing that you can try, and they work for some people, but not for all, is to set yourself a small goal. So for some people, that might just be getting up, getting dressed, uh, making yourself some breakfast. For others, it might be getting to the end of the driveway. But if it works for you, then try it. And if you're able to do like a short walk and come back to your house, I think what I will say if you're trying to use walking as a goal is always make sure that you're able to come back to your house rather than doing a really long walk in one direction and then finding it tough to get back. 
it's safer if you just do some smaller laps where you can quite easily come back, get a drink, have a sit down uh, with the safety of your house being always being quite close by. The other thing to look at in terms of your energy is your nutrition. Are you giving yourself a really nice balanced diet? Are you getting everything that you need? And are you drinking enough? And by drinking, I mean uh, non-alcoholic, non-caffeine drinks, so lots of water during the day uh, to really make sure you give yourself the best possible energy source. And then to sleep. Having a really good routine around your sleep is so important. Your sleep at night is what's known as your restorative sleep. That's the really important sleep, particularly the four hours in between about 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. So it's really important to try and get those in the bag and to have that uh, routine that leads up to those to give you the maximum to optimize that chance of having that really good sleep. We do know that people like to nap and they might feel like they need to nap. And if that's the case, then all we can say is to try and budge a nap so it's sort of late morning or early afternoon. Um, and it won't actually help with your fatigue, but it might certainly help how you feel during the day. But try not to leave your nap until um, much later in the day because then that can start to impact on the normal rhythm of your nighttime restorative sleep. Almost prepare yourself for sleep, a bit like you would prepare a, a baby or a child for sleep with a sort of wind down and a normal routine. Limit the amount of alcohol and caffeine that you have in the afternoon and certainly in the evening. Start to dim your lights to try and tell your brain that we're heading towards our good night's sleep. Maybe have a bath, do something relaxing, read a book, listen to music, or even try some relaxation and some mindfulness before you really settle down for the night. And then the thing that we've already talked about is physical activity. Physical activity and fatigue might seem like a strange thing to pair together when you're feeling exhausted and then I'm telling you that you need to do a bit of physical activity. But what we do know is there's lots of evidence out there that if you are physically active, it does help to manage your fatigue. And like we said at the beginning, this isn't intense exercise. This is just getting up and moving your body in a normal way, making yourself a little bit short of breath and really getting your heart beating. And if you want, we've got our anti coping with fatigue booklet. And there's loads of really great advice in there about how to manage your fatigue in the long term. And so in terms of living with your fatigue, the really important thing here is to involve your friends and family if you feel able to do so. Fatigue, for want of a better word, is almost like an invisible disability. And people don't understand it unless you explain it to them. And it's not always your responsibility. You could signpost them to our resource if you want to. But even just explaining to them that sometimes going out or meeting if you're having a bad day isn't something that's even possible for you to do. Uh, so involve them so that they understand. Um, and then you're not feeling bad for not getting involved in things if you're, if you're, having a, if you're not having a great, such a great day. And so finally, to summarise, I just wanted to acknowledge that with everything that you've been through with your diagnosis and your transplant and your recovery, I know that it might feel like your bodies have let you down. For whatever reason, that just might be the sense that you have. But what I can tell you is our bodies are so resilient and they're very, very forgiving and they are built to last. But you do need to give them a chance. And by giving them a chance, that's moving them in the way that they're meant to be moved, giving them the right nutrition, the right uh, hydration, making sure that you're not, you've got drunk lots of water and then they will look after us. And if you want to get some more peer support, you could also head to our online patient forum and chat with other people that have been through the similar journey with you. But yes, yeah, we're always here at Auntie Nolan and Patient Services, so please do get in touch if you have any further questions. Thank you.